Hello there all, welcome back to Yoast Acro. This video is a part of the Rubik's Cube series. In the previous one, I have shown you how to group the different sections of the cube. This time, I'll show you how to rotate them with some controls. Now let us first go and organize the nodes we have a little before it gets too distracting. Uh, hovering my mouse over the network view, I'll press Ctrl B, this makes it go full screen. I'll select all of my group nodes which have been created and I'll press the create subnet from selected option. This goes ahead and creates a single node which is nothing but like a folder which consists of all the nodes which we just selected. It basically zips up all the additional files. So now I'll call the subnet a single turn because this subnet is going to help me select any particular section I want on the cube and rotate it in any direction I want. Now I can jump into the single turn and here you can see all of my nodes again laid out. I have some additional inputs here which are kind of distracting sometimes. I can just put a network box around them and hide them. Now I have all of these sections. First let's just work with the front, top and right sections and see exactly how we are going to add in some functionality. Now to get all the functionality I want, one of the first things I want to do is uh, start by creating a control object which has all the features I'm looking for. So what are the features? First I want to be able to select the different layers, basically any one of these groups. I want to tell whether that particular section of the Rubik's Cube is going to rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise. And then I want to tell how much of a rotation is it going to get. Is it going to rotate only by 90 degrees or 180 degrees and all of those details. So to do this I need to create that control object which is going to be a simple null object again. I create a null object. Let me call it control. CTRL. I'll also put in a different color on this so it's easier to recognize. And now I want to add in all this functionality. So selecting the control object, I'll come up here in its parameters and go edit parameter interface. By default I have the copy input and cache input options. I'll just go make them invisible because I don't really need them. I'll hit apply so I have a completely blank slate. Now first thing I want to do is start by creating an ordered menu. This is going to help me select which part of the cube I want to be working with. So this I'm going to call layer. Uh, let me also give it a machine name layer. And this menu item I can add in as many as I want here. I'll do this after some time. For now let me just have it prepared. Now next thing I want to be able to do is tell it the angle of rotation. I want to tell how much it has to rotate. So this is going to be angle. And then also I don't want this angle to be more than 180 degrees because if you're going more than 180 degrees on a Rubik's Cube you would just rotate it the opposite way. Like in, there won't be any 270 degree rotation. There will just be a minus 90 instead. So I just want to make sure it's locked from 0 to 180. And the next thing I want to tell is whether or not the rotation is clockwise or whether if it's going anti-clockwise. So what I'll do is I'll just call the CCW for counterclockwise and I'll put a question mark meaning do you want it to rotate counterclockwise. When this tick mark is on it means yes. Now once it's done I'll hit accept. So I have all the options I need on the control object. Now it's time to make sure that all of these controls can actually be used. Now to actually get the values from this control object to rotate my cube I need to have some transforms in place. So let me come back to my top group here and I'll drop in a transform node directly after this group. Now for this transform group to work I can just directly go in and start giving it some values. As you can see the entire cube starts rotating. I don't really need that. I only want the top group to rotate. For this I can go to the isolation section here at the top for the groups. I can go select the top group. Problem with this, I need to do this for every single node I connect it to all the groups. I don't really want to keep doing that. Instead I'll make use of a simple expression which automatically recognizes which group it has to connect. And the expression I'm going to make use of is OP input. As you can see it returns the name of the node connected to a given input. Meaning if I have a transform node and I tell give me the input connected to this particular input. It goes back, selects this node and gives me the name. 
simple so uh, it has two arguments first I need to tell which particular node I'm looking at and then if it has more than one inputs available I need to give an index for example for this particular group node it has two input options if I want to know which is connected to the first input I need to give an index of 0 if I want to know what is connected to the second input I need to give an index of 1 so I can just go ahead select this particular expression because that's exactly what I want I'll copy that let's minimize it come back to my transform and here in this group text box I'll alt E this opens my expression editor here I'll paste the expression but remember this is a text field so if I hit apply it's going to give me an error I need to make sure Houdini recognize this as an expression so I'll put back ticks both in the beginning and end of the expression I'll hit apply and immediately it works this time if I go rename the group to anything else I want immediately the transform still works because it's actually transforming that group itself so it makes the whole thing a lot easier now now that the transform objects working the way I want it's time to add in some more functionality I'll open the parameters for our control object and what I want to do is I want the angle parameter here to control the actual rotation so I'll right click on this copy the parameter and paste that on Y axis rotation on my transform this time I can just rotate here and you can see the transform works the problem however is that now that counterclockwise is actually enabled it's rotating counterclockwise so that's perfect but if I turn it off it automatically does not go clockwise I need to do something else what I could do here is on the transform object itself I have something called inverse transformation so if I enable this and rotate now you can see the whole object rotates in the clockwise direction so using this invert transform and linking it to my actual toggle here the whole problem should be solved so I can right click on this copy the parameter right click on this paste relative reference so if I enable this this transform is enabled if I disable this you can see this one gets disabled so now when it's disabled the object is supposed to rotate clockwise because it's no longer counterclockwise but if I rotate you can see it's still rotating counterclockwise meaning my rotation is going in the reverse direction if I enable counterclockwise it's going clockwise so exact rotation but reverse all I can do is just go back to my rotation angle here and before the entire channel I'll put in a negative sign this makes the whole thing go in the reverse way so now when it's counterclockwise I rotate the whole thing goes counterclockwise I turn it off and now it goes clockwise very simple functionality to get the whole thing moving now I just need to go ahead and replicate the same thing on all of these different groups okay all so that's it for this particular video I hope you guys found this tutorial useful in the next one I'll be showing you how to finalize with all the controls for this particular cube so, in the meantime, if you have any doubts, critiques or suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below the video and I'll get back to you. So, that's it. I hope you guys are having a great time. I'll see you in the next video.